nationality, some of us are good at it. Ooh, don't go there. All right. Well, those people aren't here yet. That's the problem. <laughs> The sad part is we all know who we're talking about. Oh man. Yeah, you did know. <laughs> you did good. Christ's kingdom is this for every moment that's ever been. How do you know? This is from John 1. In the beginning, this was two weeks ago. In the beginning was Jesus, the Word. And Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. And what's it say? He was with God in the beginning. Where's the beginning? Genesis 1. No, that's not the beginning. They were already here. That's just where that story starts. That's another point along the line. The Old Testament is not the story about where God was and what God was up to. It's not like God all of a sudden showed up and wrote the table of contents and then started writing a book. That's not how it worked. God was already there. Then this something happened. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, according to the text in Genesis, they're bored and decide to create the heavens and the earth. And they started a story. And the Old Testament is not a story about all of mankind. You need to understand this. It's about the Hebrews. It's not a story about everybody. It's a story about the Hebrews. It's not a history book and it's not a science book. It's a novel. It's a true story. It's a story. It doesn't have everything that ever happened. You can't find one dog in the Bible. But obviously he created them. They're everywhere. <laughs> and he created cats. And if you want one, they live in the woods right back here. You can have like 12. Okay? So what I'm trying to tell you is God already existed. And in the beginning, Jesus, there with God, they're already there. So in that moment, the kingdom of God was already around, already existed. Verse 3 says, it's through him, Christ, that everything was made. We talked about this two weeks ago. If you can see it, you can find Jesus in it. Because the Bible says in the, later in the New Testament, everything was created by him and for him. So Jesus is the creator, according to the Bible. Okay? God's there, supervising the mission. Jesus got an idea. Hey, dude, what if we did this? Okay, good. You know, that's how it worked. It says, verse 4, you just sang this a minute ago. In him was life. And that was the light of, the, of men. We talked about this two weeks ago. Jesus has breathed a little bit of his spirit into every person. Humanity, ultimately, in the beginning, was good. But humanity turned against God, and therefore, what we now call the human condition, causes us to rebel against God. The first Adam is how it's referred to in the scripture. Adam and Eve both made some really silly decisions, and we're still paying the price for it. But the way we were created, in the image of God, was to be good, and to be righteous people. And the reason that we die, the reason that we get sick, is because of sin. There was a penalty for sin. Sorry, you gotta die. It sounds really harsh, but that was the rule. Don't do that. Well, okay. Well, that, that lasted like three sentences. Okay? Because you can read really quick. It didn't take long for the two of them to sit around and go, hey, I got an idea. Let's have some of that. That's what happened. And so God, being fair, being fair because he's just, said, so, ah, you broke the rules. You gotta do something. New rule. And they were kicked out of the garden. So you and I, created in the image of God, have the light of Christ in us, and it's that constant war between the human condition and the, the ways of God. That's that constant battle. And if you don't go through it, please tell me how. Because I haven't figured it out yet. Because it's an everyday battle for every one of us. Every moment the kingdom of God has already existed. And it has existed for every people. For every group. When the Bible talks about the world, Jesus, you know, for God to love the world, it's not the dirt, it's not the water, it's not the animals, okay? It's not the global warming condition, please. God loves people because God has expressed himself most completely through people. And so the message of the gospel, we call it the good news, is for all people. It's not for any one group. If it was for any one group, a bunch of us would be eliminated, okay? Because we don't know what group that would have been. Well, if you were not in that one group, oh well, sorry. But that's not how God worked. In fact, in the Christmas story, in Luke chapter 2, we got the shepherds, they're out in the fields by night, watching the sheep, you know, not from the angel of the Lord, and the big light, we've all seen it in the cartoons, and the big light shines down on them, and they can't see, they're like, ah, you know, we've seen it. It says they were sore afraid. That means they were scared to death, okay? And at some point, 
You got some shepherd with a big giant Star Trek beam shining down. And we've all seen it, right? You saw the pictures. It's on the cover of your Christmas card. Don't lie. You've all seen it. And that one shepherd is like, oh my goodness. And then he gets the brilliant idea. I want to put one of those on my Christmas tree. Anyway, that's not what happened. But he's so afraid. Well, of course he's afraid. The clouds are talking to him. So you're either loony or you're afraid. Those are your two choices. So they're afraid. And it says that the angel shows up, says, Glory to the Lord, says, Hey, don't be afraid. Well, yeah, right. You just zapped me with the big light from heaven, and now you're telling me not to be afraid. I got good news. What's that? Well, it's not just for you, it's for all the people, not just for you shepherds. And if you were here back this, this summer when we talked about the Sermon on the Mount, one of the responsibilities of the people is when they came to the temple, they had to provide a sheep or a lamb without any blemishes to sacrifice. And these shepherds who the angel appears to are the shepherds who worked for the temple. Their job was to raise the most perfect sheep. Now I want you to understand something. I want you to figure the, the, the significance of this. You guys' job is to provide the perfect sheep but I've got it. And they picked, God picks the lowest of humanity in terms of social class to divulge the best news ever. The guys who are job is to raise the sacrifice. Now I want you to think about that's not a by chance. God's trying to say, you think you guys are doing a good job? Wait till you see my sheep. I got you beat. And so these guys, now, they've got to go and start telling people, guess what happened to us? I'm sure that everybody in town went, really? I agree. Let's, yeah, okay, good idea. I doubt it. These were probably the uneducated social outcasts of humanity, and they're all probably sitting around going, these guys, you know, you know whatever. Because <laughs> that's what would happen. That's the same thing that would happen today. Don't lie. If somebody walked up and got in the Orlando Sentinel and said, guess what, I was up on the hill and the angel of the Lord appeared to me, we'd all throw them out with all the other nut jobs. We would. This was bold. God declares that this message is, is for everyone. Oh, well, Pastor Tom, that's not what I was taught growing up. That's not what I was taught. Well, this verse right here, 1 Timothy 2 says that God wants all men, all men, to be saved. Everybody. 2 Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slow about keeping his promise, but he's patient with us, not wanting anyone to perish, but wanting everyone to come to repentance. Now, does everyone come to repentance? No. But does God want everyone to come to repentance? Yes. Is grace fair? No. Is the fact that grace is offered to everyone fair? Yes. God's message is for all people. Later, in 1 Timothy 2, it says there's only one mediator between God and man. It's the man Christ Jesus. You and I have no other um, attorney. We have no one else to argue our case with God except Jesus. You can go argue your case. You're not going to win. You can stand before God and say, look at my long list of really nice things that I did. So, you know, I, I shouldn't get a rock in my sock this year because I was really good. So God's going to say, that's really nice, but unfortunately you need new socks. Okay, that, that's what's going to happen. We have no mediator other than Jesus. Not our list of good deeds, not our list of our holiness, not our list of all the things we've ever done or what we haven't done. None of that is going to work unless Jesus steps forward on our behalf and says, excuse me, Father, I don't know how to tell you this, but that's one of my kids. Okay, cool. One mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus. He wants everyone to come to repentance. This is from John 17. This is where... Jesus is, uh, he's been with the disciples, they've had the last supper, he's run off, and, and he's alone, and he's praying, and I refer to this chapter as the Lord's Prayer, because we have written down what Jesus prayed that night. And he's praying to God, and these are the words, my prayer is not just for these 11 guys I'm leaving behind, but I'm also praying for those who will believe in me because of their message. Well, that's us. We believe today in Jesus because of those 11 guys carrying out the mission. Would you agree? So Jesus is praying for you. And he's praying that, not some of them, but that all of them, that's us, may be one, Father, just like you and I are one, that the world might believe. Not that a certain people group, but that the whole world would come to believe. 
The good news is called the good news because it's for everyone. It's not called the good news because only one group of people got the special coupon. 